What's up, everybody? It is KR Zero, and today I want to talk about Disney's Descendants franchise. Okay, uh, a friend of mine uh, last night, a friend of mine wanted me wanted to binge watch all four Descendants movies. She was a huge fan of the series, and I, you know, I'm a 38 year old man. When the original movies came out. They weren't of interest to me, obviously, because it was a Disney Channel movie. Um, I felt I outgrown Disney Channel movies, even though I haven't outgrown any more from Power Rangers or Power Rangers in general. But they just didn't. Uh, they just didn't speak to me. Okay, I just didn't think I was going to be interested in them. So you know, on the whim of wanting to watch, uh, binge watch a movie with a friend. I decided to watch them and I have to admit the first three movies were pretty freaking decent. They were actually really good. I mean, of course they're Disney movies. You're not going to have, uh, there's going to be a certain amount of cheese to it. There's going to be a certain amount of family friendly, family friendly entertainment to it. However, it was pretty good. Um, in the sh in the movies, uh, at least the first three movies. Um, we are... Uh, the main focus of the movies were on Villain's kids. Uh, Mal, the son of Maleficent. Carlos, the son of Corella de Vil. Uh, Jay, the son of Jafar. And um, Evie, the daughter of the Evil Queen. Now, uh, over the course of the movie, they are sent to a prep school on um in Orendale, which is the world of all the different like disney uh, princesses and fairies and all that stuff pretty much any disney character went to this school okay um and these villains kids are from a island known as the isle of the lost where they pretty much imprison all of the disney villains onto that island they cannot escape from that island. They can't even use magic on that island. Um, so uh, we're seeing them do that. Uh, these villain kids go to Orendel. Um, I keep saying Orendel, but it's Oradon. <laughs> they go to the Oradon prep, um, learn how to uh, interact with the people in that world, um, in that land. And at that school, uh, which also houses the sons and daughters of other famous Disney uh, characters, um, we have Ben, who's the son of Beast, and Belle from Beauty and the Beast. Uh, we have, oh goodness gracious, uh, we have Audrey, who's the son, who's the daughter of uh, Princess Aurora and um, her prince. I forget which prince that was. Oh, and we even have Chad, the son of <laughs> the son of Cinderella and Prince Charming. Uh, Jane, the daughter of the fairy godmother, and um, what was her name? Lonnie, the daughter of Mulan and General Lee. Now. The show was that the the movies were good. The first three movies were definitely good. They actually um, do a really great job of um, really giving these characters some growth throughout the story. And I really love the costume design. I cannot get over how good the costume designs were for these characters in all three of the movies. Okay, I loved them. Um, each of the movies. Um, the costume design shows some really real good growth for these characters. Um, I especially like Mal's hair in the third movie because it was like more of a darker purple compared to the lighter purple in the first two movies. Especially in the second movie. That was god awful. No, it wasn't god awful. That wasn't god awful. I, I'm speaking out my butt. Anyways, uh, but, and I also enjoyed the addition of certain other characters and um, the sequels, the first two sequels, 
Descendants 2 and Descendants 3. And the musical numbers were actually pretty good because this is a Disney Channel movie. Uh, there was, it, and it was a musical. So they were actually pretty decent. Um, the direction was good. The writing was great. I, in, I surprisingly enjoyed all three of those first movies. However, um, and the characters played by, um, in this order, uh, Mal uh, was played by Doug Cameron, uh, <laughs> Evie was played by Sophia Carson, Jay was played by Boo Boo Stewart, and Carlos was played by the late Cameron Boyce, a, a actor who's passing um, in 2019. It even shook me because I remember him and Jesse. Um, I remember watching him grow up in Jesse. And um, what was that other show? Um, I think he was also in the... Uh, the follow-up to Jesse. Bumped. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, 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 I'm kind of getting over. It. Anyways, but he was also in Bumped. I remember watching him in that, and I thought he was going to be a great, fantastic actor. Um, as he got older, um, he would have easily translated into like adult films, um, if he wanted to. I thought he was, I thought he was going, um, I, I thought he was going places. And when he passed, it definitely hit, not only did it hit me and a lot of other like, um, audience members, um, fans of his, it hit hard for like the cast of, you know, this, this movie series. Um, I, re I recall like um, Dove Cameron being heartbroken over this. Um, same with uh, China, China Ann McClure, who played uh, Uma in the second Descendants movie and later on in the third and even in the, the recent one that just came out yesterday. Um, so I kind of understand why why the um i guess the i understand why the movie series kind of went and took like a little bit of a break um and they really didn't want to like continue it there was obviously um this was everything was about to come out if he had survived if he had still lived after 2019 I'm pretty sure they would have made the uh, they they would have made Descendants the Royal Wedding, which um, it seemed like all the movies were leading up to. Um, instead, they made a Disney a, a 30 minute animated cartoon for the Royal Wedding, which they <coughs> which they kind of mentioned uh, Carlos his character's passing in that movie. I heard it wasn't the best of um, short films, short animated projects, but hey, I'm glad they kind of talked on that. Now, let me get on to the biggest issue I have with this movie series, and that has to do with the final movie, the recent movie that came out, Descendants the Rise of Red. Look. I, like I said, in three, in over six hours, I became a huge fan of the first three movies. I loved the plot lines. I loved everything about it. The writing was good. Um, was actually pretty good for a Disney movie, uh, a Disney Channel movie, <laughs> to be expect, uh, to be exact. They were actually good, and, um... A lot of twists and turns, uh, uh, some really good twists um, near the end, especially in the third acts of each of these movies. And I can't believe I'm actually using terms like third act and all that stuff. I'm not usually that type of person who really goes into that detail, but I will admit 
that there was the plot lines were very um easy to follow um if you're really paying attention the foreshadowing was done nicely all that stuff however and yeah while well, there were certain like little moments where i was like okay i see what you're doing but you're not doing it well like um I feel like they were just obligated to do one <laughs> one particular like um, musical number in the third movie that just seemed to be in the worst position and how they kind of cut it in the middle of it was also a little off. Yeah, it kind of it kind of ruined the scene a little bit for me. But that's me. Uh, and if you, if you're paying attention, I'm talking about that, like, that one, uh, solo male musical, uh, number, uh, near the, near the climax of the, uh, of the third movie. Anywho, again, let's talk about Rise of Red. The reason why I'm having an issue with Rise of Red, and my friend actually had some similar thoughts to it and granted she is a fan of this movie series okay she even admitted that she had a little crush on jay which i ain't mad at i mean jay was a really good character i mean come on jay even though he's the son of jafar he gave me major aladdin vibes throughout all three movies i felt like he sh he he might as well have been the son of uh jasmine and aladdin and somehow Jafar just kind of scooped him up and like pretended that it was his. Just saying. I feel like they were actually going to... I feel like that was a plot line they might have actually brought up. I don't know. However, and look, I'm not going to... Um, I'm not going to keep getting the case. I keep wanting to talk more about the first three movies. And I can't really talk about the, the last movie because the last movie was utter garbage. No offense to the actors who played in it, but the direction and the writing was awful. And here's the thing. Like, the first three movies, uh, the first three movies had the same director and the same writers. Um, you had uh, just Sam McGibbon and Sarah Perriott as the um, writers of the first three movies. And you also had, um, ooh, uh, directing the first three movies was also, um, Kenny Ortega, who also did the choreography, uh, for each of the musical numbers, which was just good. Like, I liked the musical numbers, but the, the fourth movie, Rise of, uh, Rise of the Red, yeah, that was completely written by uh, two new people, Dan Frey and Rue Summer, and directed by Jennifer Fang. And they did not do that. They really did Disney dirty. They did Descendants dirty um, in regards to the Rise of Red. Okay, um, Rise of Red was basically a movie the movie was basically uh, the starring characters was uh, Red and um, goodness Red, who's the qu daughter of the Queen of Hearts, and Chloe Charming, the sister to well, the daughter of Cinderella and Prince Charming, and the sister to Chad Charming, another character in the um, first three movies that. I could care less about this man. He was nothing but a dumb jock throughout the first three movies. Uh, he he was made to be like, you know, joking cannon fodder throughout those last three movies. Uh, but, um, and in this movie, they brought in, uh, China Anna McLean was in this movie as well. She was now becoming Uma. Her character, Uma, was now becoming the, um, headmistress of uh, Oradon Prep. Sorry for the 
way I'm talking at the moment. Um, yeah, Rita Ora as the Queen of Hearts, who, out of all the characters, <laughs> some of her costume designs were actually pretty decent. I will give it that. And then you have Brandy and Paolo Montalban reprising their roles of Cinderella and Prince Charming, respectively, from the uh, Cinderella uh, ABC TV movie that came out back in the um, or late 90s, early 2000s, um, that also starred Whitney Houston. And that was like one of the biggest like selling points for this movie. Like I, I remember seeing a lot of different articles about them showing up for this movie. But that was it. It was, and none of the original, like besides China Ann McLean and Melanie Paxson, who played the fairy godmother in all the um, previous movies, who was the initial headmistress of uh, Ordon Prep, nobody else shows up. Okay, they give a little nod to like Cameron Boyce and his character Carlos. Uh, in the first 10 minutes of the movie, but, and it, it tugs at your heartstrings, I won't lie, both me and my friend literally had to take a pause and moment while we, like, teared up a little bit, we, uh, you know, I had those stuck tears, you know what I mean, but, um, other than that, oh, oh yeah, I think, uh, Julie S uh, Serda, who played the evil stepmother, aka Lady Tremaine, um, in the movie, she was also in, I uh, want to say, the third movie for like a short second. If I remember correctly. But I could have sworn I saw her. I could be wrong. I could have saw uh, another. It might have been a different woman playing her. I don't know. But it seemed like it was the same uh, woman. Either way. Yeah, that was all. That was all. Um, those are the only returning characters um, of this movie. <coughs> um, Dove Cameron, Mitchell Hope, Sophia Carson, Boo Boo Stewart weren't in it at all. Um, Mitchell Hope being uh, one who played Ben in, in the first three movies, uh, The Son of Bell and Beast. Anywho. None of them showed up for it. The storyline was really a time travel storyline. And I'm sorry to spoil it. Let me let me go ahead and... I, I need to put a spoiler warning beforehand. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm spoiling it. But it was not. It was a time travel movie. But none of the time traveling events were really paid off. Um... And it, it sucks. Like, I mean, there is... Okay, this is a full-on spoiler. So, you know, if you get to this point, skip ahead to this point. If you don't want to be spoiled, okay? Um, the movie is on Disney+, Plus, by the way. So, you know, if you got Disney+, Plus, there you go. <clears throat> but here's the thing. They time travel because of the fact that Red hates her mom. Queen of Hearts is just as evil as we've known her to be. <clears throat> but it turns out her and Cinderella used to be best friends back when they went to Oradon Prep. Like I said, all the characters in uh, all the different stories and in this Descendants world, they've all gone to Oradon Prep. Or back when Cinderella and... Back when Cinderella and Queen of Hearts used to go to the school, it was named, and the Fairy Godmother used to go to the school, it was known as Merlin Academy. Now, these girls end up going to, uh, through time uh, due to a time travel device um, in order to stop the events at the um, opening ceremony for students at Oradon Prep. You see, Queen of Hearts used her used uh, Red's invitation to join Oradon Prep as a way to basically get revenge 
on everybody in Ordon. Okay, even uh, forcing Red to sentence Cinderella to death. Um, and Chloe ends up going, uh, Chloe ends up wanting to fight Red or something like that while Red is in the middle of using the time travel device in order to stop Queen of Hearts, uh, in order to stop the Queen of Hearts from, you know, executing Cinderella. Um, but they end up going back further in time. So about 20 years before. And uh, they meet they meet Ella, Cinderella's younger self, um, and Bridget, the young Queen of Hearts. And Bridget is a completely different person from the Queen of Hearts. She's she loves everybody. She she really wants to do good things for everybody out of love and care and tenderness. Now, one thing that you find out before they time travel is that Cinderella and um, Bridget, or the Queen of Hearts, used to be best friends. But then some kind of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, some prank ended up causing the Queen of Hearts to become the Queen of Hearts we know today, the vengeful one. Now, this is the reason why I'm bringing this up is because there is no payoff to that event. I'm ex like when we when it, there's a time travel thing, you're expecting to actually see the moment when the prank actually happens. The thing that actually is going to change Bridget into the Queen of Hearts. You're expecting that, but there was nothing. There was no payoff to that. They bring up a a cookbook, an evil cookbook, in order for um, in order for uh, whew, sorry, in order for Uliana, the daughter, the younger sister of Ursula and the aunt of Alma, uh, to basically get revenge on Bridget for. Something that Bridget had no fault in. Bridget even tried to prevent her from doing it. Very much the girl ate like four flamingo feathers and it turned her into a partial flamingo. Uh, flamingo. Flamingo. Ugh. Turned her into a partial flamingo. And she got humiliated because of her own stupidity or her own of her own volition, okay? Because she was trying to be a bully. Anywho, needless to say, they bring up the spell book. And it's in Merlin's, you know, because he's like the headmaster of the school. It's in Merlin's office. And Merlin put a spell on it so that someone, if someone who, uh, if the wrong hands open it, Something will happen to them, right? And basically, it makes you wonder how the heck could these villains have gotten their hands on the cookbook and still make the prank? It doesn't make any sense. Now, granted, you could say time travel events change everything, but that's not the point. Everything was kind of going in the way it was supposed to go. There was no payoff for the prank that's supposed to be played on Bridget that will turn Bridget into the Queen of Hearts. In fact, throughout throughout their time in the past, all you hear from uh, whenever Red or Chloe hear about it, especially from Cinderella, Bridget just, you know, anytime somebody's rude or mean to her, she just dust that shit off her shoulder and she continues going on about it and still trying to make good friends. They are best friends. Let me just say, there was not enough of Bridget or Ella in the past. Especially, like, especially in the, like, climax of the film. Like, in the climax of what could be... Oh, what could be the climax of the film 
basically when the when Red and Chloe end up getting a um, cookbook. Ella and Bridget are nowhere in it. They got no actual time in the movie. And granted, this is a let's see, this is a eighty one minute movie. And it shouldn't have been eighty one minutes. Okay, like the last three movies had at least a decent runtime. Uh, the first movie was 112 minutes. Second movie was 111 minutes. And the third movie had the biggest runtime of all, with it being 120, uh, 108 minutes. Oh, I thought it was 122 minutes. Surprisingly. Okay, I was wrong. But either way, these movies, uh, should have had, this movie should have had, the fourth movie should have had better pacing. It felt so rushed. Okay? Like, me and my friend, we felt like we could have come up with a better way of the how the movie ended. This movie could have been a, a, a two-parter. Or a three-parter. It could have led into each movie going forward. But it was just... It was so bad. It was so bad. Man, it was so bad. And like I made a video, I, I I tried to record a video earlier this morning to kind of get my thoughts out. It ended up being like over an hour long. I decided to make a different one. <laughs> but dude, like this made absolutely no sense. The first three movies are, in my honest opinion, golden movies, and this movie was a complete and utter dumpster fire. I don't know what went wrong in this case. Like, these writers did not understand the story. The directors didn't understand the story. The director didn't understand the story. I'm sorry. That the other, like, it should have been an easy layup from what the other ones were saying. Heck, just pay attention to that. Make your own story using some of the writing from the first three movies with these new characters that you're trying to give us. Like, was it being a time travel story? It should not have felt this rushed. It was cleared up and they were back in time. They were back to the future in no time. Like, at least with Back to the Future, like the original Back to the Future movies, they had a good plot line. There was a decent story. Each of the characters, even the characters in the past, got good character growth. This movie just tried to put too much on all at once. And the Brandy, Paolo, and Rita aspect of it all. And China aspect of it all. And, and, and the fairy godmother popping up, Melanie Paxson, once again. It was, they were just there as cameos, really. And it wasn't really, they were just there to bring people in. And they didn't really get a good story arc. And if anything, I would have been fine with them being in the beginning of the movie. Okay? Them just showing up in the movie. And things go on the graph and the girls having to go back in time. I would have been fine with that. If the girls never went back in time, went back to the present by the end of the movie. I felt like if the movie just uh, left them kind of stranded in the time... In the past, by the end of the uh, by the end of the movie, and we get the event that's actually about to happen. Like they think they failed by the end of the movie. This movie would have been great. You could have given more character characterization for um, Ella, Bridget, even Uliana, and probably gave you a little bit of. And give some character, uh, some backstory with Merlin, uh, not Merlin, but with Hook, uh, Maleficent, Hades. Considering that Maleficent and Hades are the father and, uh, the mother and father of, uh, Mal in the first three movies, we could have got some backstory behind these, those other characters. 
Well, heck, we could have got even more um, of Merlin. Because I will say this. Jeremy Swift, uh, who played, who portrayed Merlin in this movie, really gave me the feeling of Merlin from uh, the... <laughs> Merlin from uh, the Sword in the Stone movie. I really felt like he was embodying that Merlin. Okay, it was just the vibe um, where every scene he was in. But we could have got more of that. And, like, they bring up the fact that Aladdin and Jasmine are in this movie, but they're not, like, even the young Aladdin and Jasmine, and they're not really in the movie. It's just a blinking mystic cameo for both the adult versions of them and the, the teen versions of them. It's, it, it's, it's, this is part of the reason why I feel like Disney's like failing is because they're picking the wrong writers. They're not really, they, they think they, once they think they have something good going for them, they give it to the wrong director, the wrong writer, and they realize, and they don't realize that they're dropping the ball with their own products. And I'm not even gonna say there's not there's not a single like bit of wokeness in it, unless you consider the fact that the the main characters are two girls, and they just immediately are able to pull all these crazy stunts off. I mean, Ella's uh, like Chloe's already like a really great swordsman, um, and Red just gets around town and she can escape and do all this other stuff like a boss. Yeah, you could consider it work from that standpoint, but I mean, when you have characters like Mal and Evie, Jane and Lonnie from the first three movies and Uma from the first three movies, oh my god. They are so much, they are better uh, they are better examples of strong women in those movies, and they're not like some kind of damsel in the sp- in in uh damsel in despair type movie uh type characters in those first three movies. They are they they actually have a really a, a big contribution to the whole plot. Heck. Mal and Evie are mostly the main characters out of the main four. They're pushed to the for- forefront and they actually don't have like some weird weakness in them. They're strong women. Same with Uma. She's a strong villain. She's a strong villain in the uh, second movie and a strong character in the third movie. And they're And they're women. They're girls, but they actually have good writing. And I feel like that's, and it's starting to make me realize that this is what a lot of people are talking about when it comes to all these different projects that are coming out, these different movies that are coming out. Um, when they say, when they see a character and they realize, oh, you're just giving them power up because they're a women char- they're a female character, okay? And you're, and you're just letting them become either Mary Sue or something like that because they're a character. They don't give them any actual writing to push them to it. I feel like, I want to watch um, uh, that one movie. Oh, goodness gracious. I can't, why can't I remember movies right now? Oh, boy. It's, a, it's like a prequel to Mad Max Furio- Furiosa. There we go. I really want to watch Furiosa. Just to see how they really make that character that uh, Charlie Theron played, Furiosa, in the Mad Max Fury Road movie, into how how what kind of a backstory they give her. I mean, I haven't heard anything bad about it, but I feel like uh, it's actually a pretty decent one. I could be wrong. Let me see what Rotten Tomatoes give it. 
Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 90%, IMDb gave it a 7.7. So I actually want to check it out. It might actually be a decent movie. Well written character and everything. But or, at the end of the day, man, like, I feel like Disney really dropped the ball with Rise of Red. The Descendants, uh, the Rise of Red. Because, oh my god. Me just been watching four Descendants movies. Having never watched a Descendants movie in my life. And loving the first three like it was just golden without having any foreknowledge. Like, I made that decision on my own. I was telling my friend, oh my god, thank you for like getting me hooked on this. I am hooked. I can't wait to... Let's see what the next one is. I was ready to press the play button before she was ready to press the play button. I just hold, held out because I needed to be and I didn't want to miss anything. The second I watched, the second 10 minutes went past and the rise of red, I was already annoyed by what I was watching. The musical numbers were actually pretty good, but other than that, it was just... Boring and monotonous. Chloe doesn't even really get any characterization. Red! Red could easily have some character growth in this movie, but she didn't. Like, Chloe's just there. She just happens to be a part of the... She just happens to be, like, a, a passenger on the train of, that is the plot. Not the conduct... Not, a, not one of the conductors. Heck, Red isn't even a conductor of this train that is the plot. That's how bad this movie was. Oh, goodness. That's how bad this movie was. And some people are going to look at this this particular video and look at it, and look at it from the perspective of, oh, you're just anti-woke. Bruh, I am not anti-woke. I'm not woke either. I know when a movie is good. If this movie made me rethink my position on the Marvels. Because I now realize that the only reason why I liked the Marvels was because of Amon Vellani portraying Kamala Khan. That's it. Everybody else. Everything else was just, eh. Kamala Khan and her family was like the only good thing about that movie. And the cat scene, okay, in that movie. That was hilarious, too. But, other than that, that movie was dumpster fire. The villain wasn't really, was one-dimensional. She wasn't a really good villain. She was just there. Um, Brie Larson as Captain Marvel, I get that she's trying, the, the writing is trying to give her, like, better role, but, ugh. And Monica, oh my goodness, Monica. Monica was also done dirty, okay? Monica was also done dirty. <sighs> like, uh... Fiona Paris playing Monica? Look, I was expecting her to be great in this movie. Like, this is not... Because the way I looked at it was that even though... Uh... WandaVision was her, her origin story. Her her main superhero origin story. The Marvel should have been all about... In my honest opinion, the Mo Marvel should have been more about Monica than it was about Kamala or Brie. We should have got a lot more character development in uh, Monica Rambeau and just a little bit of character growth for... Miss Marvel and Captain Marvel, respectively. That's it. This should have been, in all honesty, this should have been Tayona Paris's movie, The Marvels. But I'm getting off the subject. Look, I realize, I realize after watching this Descendants movie, how royally wrong I was about The Marvels. That's bad, Disney. Like, the fact that you have a guy who was, like, 100% on your side for the movie that you're making. 
the fact that he's now saying because of this movie, this new movie that you came up with, he is now re, re like recalling his initial praise of the Marvels. That's saying something, buddy. Y'all gotta y'all gotta go y'all gotta look for the writers, the original writers that you had for it, because they can make good characters. It doesn't I get that you're trying to do the diversity, uh inclusion, the the diversity diversity, equity, inclusion stuff, the DEI stuff. I get it. I understand it. But it should not come at the cost of the character of the writing and characterization of your characters. That's what I'm trying to say. Like I am all for representation, but representation should be should be if you're gonna put it in a, a, a movie or a show or whatever, it should be it should it should be like the last thing on the bottom it should be on the bottom rung from however you're going to develop a movie. From the writing of the movie, the writing of your characters, and the production and direction of the movie. It should be the last thing on your mind. And I hate to say it, because like it should be, the only time that it should be, <laughs> um, like the only place where it should be is making sure that you get the right actors they can also diversify and include, include, be equal. Make sure you write these characters and make sure you can put these, you can put certain actresses in the roles and then not feel woke. That's, that's all I gotta say. I mean, I could be, I could have gotten a little bit off in that last bit, but that's all I can say at this point, because it's just like, I could continue talking about this. Look, last thing I'm going to say is, if you've never seen Disney's The Descendants, the first three movies, Descendants 1, 2, and 3, definitely check them out. It's a great trilogy. But Rise of the Red, I'm sorry, you're... <laughs> Y'all failed miserably with that one. I'm sorry. Like, even my roommate agrees, even my friend who convinced me to binge watch these movies last night agrees this was not it this the rise of red was a major f failure i mean if you made descendants three if you did descendants three like you did high school musical it would have did gangbusters in in <clears throat> in theaters in my honest opinion y'all did boost up the quality of that last movie if you ever, if you tried to put Rise of Red, you would, it would flop so hard in its opening weekend. That's the reason why you probably had to put it on Disney Plus. But that's it for this video. Like I said, I don't really want to say bad things about anything right now, but when you know, when I, like I said, I binge watched four movies in a row. Even though it was the last movie, I was looking forward to something good in that last movie because I had gotten so hyped on the first three. Like, I could go through two more movies if I wanted to because I was so... I, I had so much hype from those first three movies. After watching those first three movies, I was super excited. I was ready. And that movie just made me just, oh. Anywho, you guys have a great day, great week, great month, great year. Disney, do better. Do better. Look back at your old movies and don't, re don't look back at some of your old um, fan favorites, especially the first three Descendants movies, and don't just remake them. Do better writing. Make better stories. Realize what's missing. Because you are missing. You are missing something ever since this. Ever since 
COVID started. You are missing something. That's the reason why most of your projects are kind of going, uh, or mostly miss out of the hit and miss thing. You get like a couple of hits every once in a while, but you get so many misses. Y'all need to do better. Okay, do better. And I'm not saying make a make your next uh, uh, main character a big female or LGBT representative type situation. I'm saying I'm not saying that you don't have to do that, but make sure they're written they're written well. Make sure that people can really get behind that character. Is all I'm saying. Well, that's it for me. Have a good day.